Hello and welcome to this course on model predictive control. In this week, we are looking at state space model predictive control. Okay. Uh, in the first lecture, which spanned which spanned more more like one and half hours, so first one and half lectures split into multiple videos. We have covered the deterministic uh, state space MPC. We talked about model augmentation. What are the requirements in order to handle measured disturbances, unmeasured disturbances, and all of these things. We also uh, drew parallels between dynamic matrix control algorithm and state space uh, MPC. Thereafter, in the previous lecture, which was comparatively short lecture, which was less than half an hour, uh, in the previous lecture, we went over stochastic state space MPC. We ended that lecture uh, saying that uh, the model predictive control toolbox is what can be used in order to do stochastic state space MPC or in general state space MPC, the entire thing that we have been discussing in the last uh, couple of uh, days, we can actually do that using uh, the MPC toolbox. Okay. I am now going to talk about some of the features of the MPC toolbox and the best way to learn the features of MPC toolbox is by solving a particular problem. Okay. Before I demo a problem to you, you can actually have a self guided tutorial. Okay. The example that I am going to talk about in this video is a solved example from MATLAB's MPC toolbox usable. Okay. So, this example, I like this example quite a lot. This is uh, a paper machine headbox control and uh, this is the example that uh, I am going to talk about, but any of the user guide examples you are free to try out. Okay. So, what is this example? So, this is a solved problem in MPC toolbox user guide. So, I am kind of using some of the co copyrighted material from the MPC toolbox. But this falls under what is called fair use, I am using this for educational purposes. So, that is the uh, reason for using, using this. So, this is used so that I can help you with self guided tutorial on using MATLAB's MPC toolbox. We will go over this problem in this video. Please go over this video, but more importantly, look at the user guide. Some of, some of the features that are there in the user guide, I'm, uh, user guide, I am going to explain in this video. Okay. So, uh, this is basically what is known as a head box in a paper machine. So, uh, you are kind of manufacturing paper from the pulp and the various uh, uh, things that are involved in that process are, can, can be controlled. So, you have a feed tank that is shown over here and you have what is known as a head box. Okay. Uh, now, there is the level in the feed tank which is H1. Okay. There is a consistency, something a variable called consistency, which is N1. Okay. We have a head box where the level in the head box is H2 and we have the consistency M. Okay. And this particular uh, 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 paper, quote unquote, what is going to form a paper goes through this particular wire and you get a wet paper which is then dried, it goes through processing, bleaching, etc., etc., in the down, downstream process. We are not looking at the downstream process, we are only looking at the feed tank plus head box. Okay. So, there are four states, these four states are level 1, level 2, consistency 1, consistency 2. Okay. The outputs that you are interested in controlling according to this particular problem setup is the level in head box 2 consistency in the feed tank and consistency in the head box too. What are the manipulated variables? Manipulated variables are flow rate okay, of the inlet and flow rate of the recycle. Okay, it is a white water flow rate. Okay. So, these are the two manipulated variables. The consistency of the inlet is a measured disturbance. Okay, and the unmeasured disturbance. is NW. 
okay that is the consistency of the recycle stream okay. So, that is the overall problem setup okay. Keep in mind that in MPC toolbox what we had said is U and D forms input in actually in the MPC toolbox U, D and W can form the inputs also. So, what basically that means is V is going to be U, D, W and there is a way in uh, MPC toolbox to specify which one of these are manipulated inputs which are measured disturbances and which are unmeasured disturbances. Okay. So, uh, there is a non-linear model for the system. The non-linear model if you, if you are interested uh, it is in the paper by Lee and Ricker. In industrial and engineering uh, chemistry research ok. In this they talk about EKF plus non-linear EPC ap applied to the same problem ok. You can read this paper and uh, look at the non-linear model. The non-linear model is going to be of this form I actually I should have written V over here ok. Uh, you can then linearize this model and when you linearize this model uh, you are going to get these linear matrices A C B C uh, C C. You can then use the S S command in order to obtain a linear continuous time model ok. Now, B C if, if you look at this basic basically the ones that are corresponding these two these correspond to the measured uh, sorry manipulated variable ok. U 1 and U 2 are the manipulated variables ok. This one corresponds to measured disturbance this guy corresponds to unmeasured disturbance ok. So, that is uh, how you have your overall matrices that are set up ok. Uh, so, uh, once you have a linear continuous time model you can choose the sampling time if my memory sounds uh, is, is right I think the sampling time that they have used in this example is 2 seconds. So, you can use that sampling time and then you can then go ahead setting the MPC toolbox. MPC toolbox you have two options you can use a GUI based setup the graphical interface user interface based setup it is much easier to start off with, but it is less powerful. On the other hand, uh, if you want to really explore the entire power of MPC toolbox, you should start getting used to using the command line tools ok. That means, on the command you can type the MPC toolbox commands and you can use the MPC toolbox that way ok. In this video, I am going to talk about the MPC tool because that is what is used in the solved problem in MATLAB's MPC user guide. Okay. So, as I said we with the model that is shown over here you are setting up the overall uh, variables the V1 and V2 form our MVs U and that is going to be our GP and GW ok. Our D is going to be formed by V3 where V is the four variables four in input variables and w is going to form be formed by v4. So, this is going to be a uh, measured disturbance and this is going to be unmeasured disturbance ok. The outputs there are three outputs h2, n1 and n2 ok. Now, H2, N1 and N2 we can have them as controlled variables or we can have them as measured variables as well. All three of them are measured uh, and two or three of them might be controlled depending on uh, the choice ok. So, the uh, weights the input and output weights. So, there are no input weights of course, there are input rate weights and the input rate weights is 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 for the two inputs ok. The output weights is 1 and 1 for, for H2 and N2 
okay the outputs from the first tank they are not controlled as you can see that the weight is zero so that is allowed to move freely the constraints that are there is that the input should be between minus 10 and plus 10 and the input rate should vary between minus 2 and plus 2 okay various three different scenarios have been covered in the video uh, sorry in the uh, uh, user guide first one is a set point tracking what what's the condition for set point tracking the condition for set point tracking is n2 is given a step change that means So, the n2 has uh, the set point for n2 is changed from 0 to 1 at time 0 and you want to do the set point tracking problem. The feed forward problem is that measured disturbance variable has a step change at time 0. Okay. And the third case is the case of unmeasured disturbances and in this case the unmeasured disturbance also has a step change at time 0. So these are the three scenarios that uh, you can look up in the user guide and try to solve them on your own. Okay. And final thing that the user guide, some of it is there, some of it is not necessarily there, but the things that you can try is you try varying the output weights. So the output weights are 1, 0 and alpha. Try reducing the alpha to 0 0.1, 0 0.01 or try increasing it to 10 or 100 and see how does it overall affect. The other thing that you can do is you can keep alpha at 1 and then change the input rate. So, instead of 0 0.4, 0 0.4, you can change it to 4, 4 or you can change it to 0 0.04, 0 0.04. You have already done an exercise like this earlier when we talked about LQ regulator. Long time back when we talked about DMC also, you might have done this particular uh, experiment as well. Now you are repeating this with MPC toolbox and you can see that the uh, qualitative results are consistent across LQR, DMC as well as state space MPC. Okay. The next one is the estimator. Okay. You, you will see that the estimator automatically assigns certain disturbances because uh, our this output is not being controlled, it is not being controlled why because the uh, weight is 0, because this output is not being controlled only two output disturbances are added as step disturbances or integrating type of disturbances, but because there are three measurements what, uh, what automatically MPC toolbox will do is add a third integrating white noise in one of the inputs. Okay. Uh, when it comes to, so that is why we have two output disturbances and one input disturbance that automatically uh, MPC toolbox adds. Keep in mind that there is no requirement that there, there needs to be an input disturbance, why? Because there are only two output variables that require integrator. You need to add integrator so that those two output variables either directly or indirectly are affected by those integrating white noise sequences. Okay. The other thing is that because there are three measurements, what are the three measurements? Your H2, N1 and N2. Because there are three measurements, at most you will be able to estimate three integrating white noise sequences. It does not guarantee that all three you will be able to estimate because there are, there are detectability conditions that needs to be met. But if you have a fourth integrating white noise that you cannot estimate uniquely from three measurements. So, what is required is that the observability conditions be met and the maximum number of integrating white noise disturbances that you can add are three. The minimum number that you should add are two. Why? Because there are two control variables that we need to ensure offset free tracking. This is something that you will be able to see in this example you can look up the overall description, you can change the various parameters and see this is indeed what you will get if you change the various parameters. Measurement noise is a Gaussian white noise. Okay. 
and finally you can play around with the prediction and control horizons and see the effect of changing p and changing m always m is going to be less than or equal to p you can change the p by keeping n uh, m constant you can change m by keeping p constant and you can try out various things and observe what is the effect of m and p okay so these are the various things that you can do with the npc toolbox example what i highly recommend that you do is look up uh, uh, the lecture notes uh, sorry look up the mpc user guide and try to follow the mpc user guide in order to understand how you can configure the mpc toolbox with that i come to the end of this lecture and indeed end of this week's material i will add uh, one more brief uh, video on uh, uh, how uh, I will add one more brief tutorial video uh, so that you can see for yourself a demo of using MPC toolbox. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I will see you next week. Thanks and bye.